Okay. Hi, I'm Abhijit Datta. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Institute for Advancing Intelligence, TCG, based Kolkata. Uh, today, I'm here to present our work, Release of Unverified Plain Text, Tight Unified Model and Application to Any Day. It's a joint work with Donghun, Nilanjan, Bart, Medul, Samitra, and Ferdinand. So the outline of the, outline of the talk is as follows. Uh, we will begin with the definitions of AE and, the, and its related security notion. Then we will talk about the release unverified plain text security, followed by I will explain uh, inter-UP attack on Sunday. And then I will talk about uh, uh, interrupt secure variant of Sunday, which we call as Monday. And uh, followed by that, I will talk about a generic inter-UP uh, design, which we call as any day, followed by its uh, optimal instantiation, which we call as twisted. Okay, so uh, in any symmetric cryptographic scheme, we basically look for two things. One is the privacy or the data privacy, and the other thing is the data integrity. So data privacy is ensured by a secure encryption scheme, and data integrity is ensured by a MAC scheme. But uh, if we want to ensure both, I mean the data privacy and the data integrity simultaneously, then uh, AE scheme provides the two things together. So an authenticated encryption scheme provides data privacy as well as the data integrity. Okay. Now there are broadly there are two types of authenticated encryption scheme. One is a stateful authenticated encryption scheme and another is a stateless authenticated encryption scheme. So in a stateful AE, uh, we generally uh, use a nonce or a random IV or arbitrary IV as a state of the algorithm. And a stateful authenticated encryption algorithm is comprised of a pair of algorithms, uh, which is the encryption and the decryption algorithm. So the encryption algorithm takes a message N and associated data A and some kind of a state, which we call as a nonce, which is denoted as N, and produce the output C, the ciphertext C, which is transmitted to the receiving end. Uh, and the receiving end, upon mm, receiving the ciphertext C, the receiver will decrypt the cipher text using a decryption algorithm which again takes an associated data A, the received cipher text C and the same state N and produce some message or some garbage stuff, right? But a stateless authenticated encryption scheme, we do not require any kind of a state or we do not require any kind of a nonce, okay? So uh, as you can see from this slide that uh, this is communicated via two parties or in between two parties but in and in between there is a malicious adversary who can actually listen to the uh, traffic in the network right and this malicious adversary can potentially change the cipher text to some new cipher text right okay so uh, now uh, when we call an authenticated encryption scheme is secure so basically there are two uh, mm, requirements or two two notions of uh, authenticated uh, the two notions of security of authenticated encryption scheme one is the privacy requirement or what or in other words we call is an incp requirement so uh, in in incp game uh, uh, an adversary is basically uh, given access to uh, to some oracle right so the adversary actually interacts with some oracle in the either in the real world or in the ideal world in the real world the uh, adversary is given access to the encryption function, to the actual encryption function. And in the ideal world, the adversary is given access to some random function. Now, adversary doesn't know that which oracle it is interacting to, right? So, adversary can make query to its accessed oracle and uh, correspondingly it gets that its response. So, upon making a finite number of queries, the adversary has to distinguish or adversary has to tell that whether he has talked or he has interacted to the uh, encryption function which is the oracle for the real world or to the random function which is the oracle for the ideal world. Now if the adversary does not distinguish or cannot distinguish that, uh, the, between these two scenarios then we will say that the authenticated encryption scheme is a secure authenticated encryption scheme. So for a secure authenticated encryption scheme this distinguishing advantage should be negligible. Okay. Now uh, the other requirement for a secure authenticated encryption scheme is the integrity requirement or in other words we call is at uh, int ctxt. So in in CTXT game, the adversary is given access to the encryption and the decryption oracle, and the adversary can make query to these two oracles. Upon making a finite number of queries, adversary has to produce a non-trivial, non-authentic, uh, non-trivial uh, triplet, 
namely the non associated data A, A star and the cipher text C star such that this tuple is a valid tuple in the sense that upon decryption it gives back a certain or a, or a, or a, or a, or a valid message M star, right? If the adversary uh, cannot produce uh, such non trivial tuple, then we will say that uh, the authenticator and encryption scheme is insecure. So, for a uh, uh, sorry, is, is secure. So, for a secure authenticator and encryption scheme, this forging advantage should be negligible. Okay. So, basically, or in, in summary, an authenticated encryption scheme is secure in a conventional sense if it achieves both the NCPA security and the NCTFC security. Now, uh, you might have noticed that uh, in, in a conventional authenticated encryption scheme, when the cipher text reaches to the decryption end, then the, 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 the plain text, I mean upon decryption, it will, it, 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 it produces the plain text and the plain text, the whole plain text needs to be stored in some buffer so that it can be verified, right? So for a valid decryption or for a, for a, uh, 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 val yeah, for a valid decryption, the entire plain text needs to be stored in the decryption end. But this is sometimes not possible uh, while you are you are you are dealing with some resource constrained devices, right? So in, in, in that scenario, you are not allowed or you are, you are not given an access to a much uh, uh, much much storage space. So in that case, you might have to release the plain text blocks before you uh, before you store the entire plain text. So the plain text blocks can be released only after the successful verification in the receiver end for a conventional AE scheme but the buffer size in the receiving end might be limited and as a result of that it might not be able to hold the entire plain text at once and in that case receiver might have to release the plain text before verification and theref uh, therefore that situation might uh, you know might uh, give some kind of an attack uh, to, to, to the uh, encryption uh, to the to the authenticated encryption scheme for example in this slide as you can see that alice uh, sends uh, 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 five cipher uh, 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 five blocks of cipher text to the uh, receiver Bob, but the Bob only has uh, only has a storage to store three uh, blocks at a time. So in that case, Bob has to release some kind some 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 plain text blocks before the entire verification gets done. Okay, so uh, in that case or in that situation, uh, we need some kind of a different security model for an authenticated encryption scheme which we call as RUP security model or released unverified plain text security model. So in this security model the encryption algorithm remains as it is but the decryption algorithm is split it up into two parts. One is the core decryption algorithm which takes the nonce associated data and the cipher text C and produces some message M and the other part is the verification algorithm which takes the nonce associated data and the cipher text triplet and returns uh, either either accept or reject. Okay. And accordingly, the decryption algorithm will will output whether the uh, whether it accepts the cipher text or not. Okay, so this RAP security model was uh, formalized by Andriva et al. in Asia Crypt 2014, and basically, it uh, the, 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 that paper introduces two kind of a security notion. One is the PA1 or a PA2 notion, and another is the interrupt notion. So uh, in, the, in the PA1 notion, the adversary is given access to a pair of oracles either in the real world or in the ideal world. So real world is comprised of, a, of, of the encryption and the decryption algorithm and the ideal world is comprised of the encryption algorithm and a simulator. Okay? This is, the simulator is a basically a probabilistic polynomial algorithm which, whose main task is to simulate the decryption behavior of the real world. Now uh, in, in PA1 notion, the simulator has additional access to the encryption history. Now what is the encryption history? Now when the adversary makes query to the encryption oracle of the ideal world, then the, 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 the query uh, response pattern is accessed by the simulator. Okay? So at the, the simulator gets to see the uh, query response of the, uh, of the adversary while it is interacting to the encryption algorithm of the ideal world. But in the PA2 notion, the simulator does not have access to the encryption history. So in that case, in, in, in that way, you can uh, imagine, or you can you can uh, probably understand that the PA2 notion is a stronger notion than the PA1. Okay, and we say that this uh, authenticated encryption scheme is RUP secure or a released unverified plain text secure if it achieves both the NCPA security and the PA1 security and the int interrupt security. Okay. Now, uh, followed by this work, there have been different variants of RAP security model 
So uh, Huang et al. introduced the robust authenticated encryption notion in Eurocrypt 2015. So it basically covers the non misuse uh, uh, notion and it bridges the gap between the authenticated encryption and the SPLP security through a ciphertext expanding parameter. Basically, uh, AZ uh, algorithm, it follows the robust authenticated uh, encryption notion. And uh, in, the, in, in the same paper, they have also introduced the PA2 notion actually. Right, and uh, they in fact they consider uh, a variant of a robust authenticated encryption scheme where the decryption leakage is allowed, in which a simulator simulates the decryption leakage without having access to the query history. So, uh, note that this is a stronger model than PA1, right? So, where the simulator sees the communication between the encryption and the, and, and the simulator, uh, simulator uh, uh, between the adversary, right? So, uh, in, in uh, 2015, in IMAC. Uh, Barwell et al. They have uh, proposed a subtle authenticated encryption notion, which is basically a refinement of robust authenticated encryption notion for a non-spaced AE, and it covers several types of security definition by varying the decryption oracle choices in the ideal world. Okay, uh, in, in crypto 2017, Ashur et al. They have introduced a RUP AE notion, RUP authenticated encryption notion. It basically focuses on the non-spaced AE, and uh, it says that. Uh, uh, an authenticated encryption scheme is RUPA secure if uh, it is PA1 secure as well as the interrupt secure, where the ideal model decryption being a random function. Okay, uh, well, uh, it is uh, well known that this uh, encode then SPRP is known to achieve uh, uh, robust authenticated encryption scheme and the uh, RUPA uh, security, and this such construction uh, is two pass in both the encryption and the decryption uh, algorithm. And uh, the security notions hold for a nonce based A. Well, when, when there is uh, misuse of nonce, then security is void. So that, uh, you know, uh, that, that requires a security model in a RUP scenario, which allows uh, two things. One is the nonce misuse and another is the single pass decryption feature. So to this end, we have proposed our security notion, which we call as the AE RUP security notion. Uh, in this security notion, uh, well, the adversary is given access to a triplet of oracles in either of the real world or in the ideal world. So the real world is comprised of a triplet of uh, algorithms, uh, which are uh, encryption algorithm, decryption algorithm, and the verification algorithm. Whereas the ideal counterpart of these algorithms are the random function, which is denoted as dollar, the simulator uh, script S, and the reject oracle. Okay, and we have shown that if a uh, scheme is AE secure, I mean in a, in a conventional sense, as well as PA1 secure and interrupt secure, then that scheme is basically the AE RUP secure. And these security notions, they are equivalent because it's a bidirectional, uh, no, bi bi bidirectional, right? Because if, uh, if, if you can prove that a scheme is AE RUP secure, that means that the scheme gives you the AE security, the PA1 security, as well as the interrupt security. Okay. Now, uh, in FSA 2019, uh, Bernick et al., they have proposed a deterministic authenticated encryption scheme, which they call as a Sunday. So it is basically kind of a Mac then encrypt scheme, where the Mac part is followed by a CBC type of algorithms, and the uh, uh, encryption part uh, is designed using the, uh, the OFB mode. Okay. Uh, so it's a deterministic authenticated encryption scheme, and it makes a uh, total A plus 2M plus 1 mini block cipher calls. Uh, where A is the number of um, associated data blocks, M is the number of message blocks, and uh, it is one of the authenticated encryption candidates in the recent like, NIST lightweight cryptographic competition. Uh, this scheme is particularly efficient for processing short messages, and uh, its state size is as small as the block size as you can see. It's a block cipher based uh, authenticated encryption scheme, and its state size is basically uh, the state size of the of the block cipher, which is which is, which is uh, essentially n bits, right? The state sizes, and it offers good implementation characteristics both on the lightweight and the high performance high performance platforms. But uh, uh, this uh, bad news that the scheme is not uh, RUP secure. I mean, you cannot use this scheme uh, if you are dealing uh, with a with a with a with a lesser amount of storage space in the decryption end. Right, so it, it is not RUP secure, and uh, and we have we have shown the inter, inter UP attack on this uh, scheme. 
So, what is the attack? The uh, attack is as follows. The adversary first makes a decryption query with the empty associated data. Uh, the tag is T1, where T1 is essentially 1, 1, 0 to the n minus 2 and, uh, and some arbitrary ciphertext blocks is C1, okay? and it obtains M1. Right? Now, how does this uh, decryption algorithm help the adversary to gain any kind of a knowledge? So, you see that by making this decryption query, adversary learns the output of one uh, out, encryption output of 1, 1, 0 to the n minus 2, which is nothing but the sum of the first, which is nothing but the sum of the message block and the ciphertext block, which is M11 plus C11. Right? Now, the adversary makes another decryption query, again with the empty associated data, uh, with uh, the tag T2 and uh, arbitrary ciphertext block C21, where now T2 is set to the uh, first message block and the cipher, the sum of the first message block and the cipher text block and the first associated data block A1, okay, and it obtains some, uh, uh, some message block M2, okay. Now, again, using this query, the adversary learns the second output, right, second output of the uh, block cipher, which is nothing but ek of 110 to the n minus 2 plus A1, Encrypt and, and this is followed by another encryption layer, right? Uh, and this is nothing but M21 plus C21, I mean the, uh, uh, the, 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 the current ciphertext block and the message block, okay? Adversity makes another query, okay? Uh, decryption query with again with the empty associated data block uh, with the new tag T3 and the arbitrary ciphertext block uh, C31. But now the tag T3 is set to the uh, uh, so, say set to say M31 plus C31, okay. Uh, so it would be, yeah, M31 plus C31 plus A prime 1, where A prime 1 is a new associated data block and it obtains some M31. So it would be M21, okay, right? Right, so uh, yeah, it would be M21 plus C21 plus A prime 1 and uh, it, it, it would uh, give uh, an, uh, a new ciphertext block, M, a new plain text block M31. And by this, the adversary learns again the uh, the output at the same point but now with a different associated data block okay now adversary makes uh, encryption query where the first associated data block is set to the a prime 1 and the second associated data is set to a2 plus delta where delta is m21 plus c21 plus m31 plus c31 and and followed by some arbitrary associated data blocks uh, some some message m and it obtains some ciphertext blocks and c uh, and, and attack t now, adversary will forge with that associated data block A, uh, associated data A, the tag T, which is obtained as a result of the encryption query, and the ciphertext C, right? So, that, um, that, that uh, says that this Sunday is basically not entirely secure uh, authenticated encryption scheme. But, uh, okay, so uh, now, we will show that if we make a slight change on the construction of Sunday, then we will get a uh, inter-UP secure variant, uh, uh, inter UP secure design, uh, which we call as a Monday. So, uh, so let us uh, first uh, investigate that. Uh, what is the reason for uh, mounting an inter -UP attack on Sunday? So, uh, the main reason of uh, mount, the main reason of this is that adversary can learn the encryption output of the tag for any value of the tag that the adversary can choose by himself or herself. Right, so then there's a question like, can we make a small change to the construction and make it RUP secure? So one potential uh, or one possible uh, answer is to uh, uh, just uh, you know uh, just uh, in, uh, invoke another uh, block cipher uh, before uh, the before the encryption starts, right? But uh, you know that basically uh, cost one extra block cipher call. So instead of that, what we will, what we have done. We have uh, introduced a fix one function. So, what is the fix one function? It basically takes an n bit value and it chops or it, it truncates the last bit of that n bit value and appends there a uh, bit one. Okay, so that's the fix one function. So, if we introduce a fix one function before the t gets to the next block cipher, uh, uh, block cipher in the, in, in, the, in the encryption phase, then uh, we will get a RUP secure uh, design, which we call the Monday. So, the construction of Monday is exactly similar to the Sunday construction, except 
that there is a fix one function okay in between uh, the tag generation and the uh, uh, encryption phase okay so uh, so um, apart from this we have also observed that we can actually uh, generalize this design okay so uh, we have uh, come up with a, a new generic uh, rdp secure uh, any design which we call as any day so uh, here we need a format function which takes a uh, associated data and the message and it produces a sequence of blocks okay so block is nothing but n bit binary string so b1 delta 1 times up to bl minus 1 delta l minus 1 so it basically uh, produces l many uh, blocks and uh, delta 1 to delta l minus 1 these are uh, n bit strings and we need a function a row 1 function uh, which takes a block bi and, uh, uh, and and a value delta i and it gives n bit value uh, we need uh, two another uh, functions uh, row 2 and row 3 which is uh, n bit to n bit functions okay now we need certain kind of assumptions on this format function row 1 function and row 2 and row 3 functions to make this scheme secure so uh, the question is is any day secure for any choice of format row 1 row 2 and row 3 function certainly not we need some kind of assumptions on this function so let us assume that f1 script f1 is a set of first block outputs of the format function now is we say that if the format function is injective and a prefix free function okay uh, if row 1 is uh, epsilon 1 differential uniform and the gamma 1 regular function uh, if row 2 is the gamma 2 regular and row 3 is gamma 3 regular function if uh, this this uh, script f1 is the uh, disjoint from the range of row 2 and uh, if uh, the, the the cardinality of f1 and the range of row 3 is omega then the advantage of i mean the rough rough advantage of any day can be bounded by sigma square over 2 to the n plus uh, omega times sigma times gamma 3 plus qd over 2 to the n where qd is the number of decryption query okay okay so uh, now uh, let me just clarify that what is the differential uniform and the regular function so uh, so as you can see that this row 1 uh, uh, is basically you know uh, takes a 2n bit string okay now if you take uh, 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 say so uh, if you take say delta and delta prime okay now so for any choice of delta and delta prime and for any choice of y the probability of row 1 that takes b comma delta 1 uh, or b comma delta plus rho b comma delta prime equals to some y this probability if this probability is negligible over the random choice of b then we will say that this row 1 is a epsilon 1 differential uniform right and uh, what is the uh, regular uh, uh, function so the regular function says that uh, for any choice of delta and for any choice of y if the probability that rho 1 b delta equals to y for a random choice of b then we will say that this is a um, regular function okay so this is the definition is more or less similar with the uh, you know the axq probability of the hash function or the regular uh, probability of the hash function but there the probability was actually was defined over the randomness of the underlying key space k right but here this row 1 or this row 1 function is basically a deterministic function but here this this b so we we calculate the probability over the randomness of the block b okay okay so that's the security result of the advantage of any day now uh, now it is pretty clear that our scheme uh, monday this is basically an instantiation of the any day scheme where your row 2 is a fixed one function we have also proposed uh, another uh, uh, another concrete uh, authenticated encryption scheme which is rup secure and we call it as a twist day and it is a n bit state deterministic authentication scheme and it is basically an optimal instantiation of any day and we have shown that this monday and the tuesday these are inter up secure but tuesday unlike monday they this it, it this construction makes an optimal number of block ciphers okay and but this optimality comes at the cost of some additional multiplexer which could significantly i mean the slightly increase the hardware area because uh in, in the design of tuesday we essentially considered many cases okay and depending on the cases there are different choices 
and uh, that basically you know introduces kind of a multiplexers while you are going to implement it in hardware and that potentially may increase the hardware area and uh, so that's it so uh, so uh, if, if, you, if you have any further queries you can uh, drop a mail to any one of us and we will try to uh, give you the answers thank you